What's happening, Team BH? Happy Monday. Wakey, wakey, time to get to work. It's another week, another opportunity to do something good, right? Don't get stagnant. Have some fun, make things happen. All right, we got a great week planned. How we doing, Colleen? Okay, so here's what we got. Let's go over a couple things we got going on this week. It's still Mission Essential May, number one. This weekend, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. You realize it's Memorial Day weekend this weekend, right? Psh, time, we're in like a time warp here. It's like the twilight zone. So I can't believe it's Memorial Day weekend. All right, so, so I'm giving you something fun and positive to do to give back to your community, and that's the run for response. One more chance to donate some cash money to the Stephen Siller Tunnels to Tower Foundation to help our frontline heroes, first responders, police, firemen, EMS workers that are literally risking their lives every day, working their butts off for our keep our communities safe and clean. That's this weekend, Friday, um, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Anytime, any place, anywhere, lace them up, get out, walk, run, jog, whatever you want to do, okay? Get out there and, and do our virtual 5K, hashtag Varsity House Gym, tag Varsity House Gym, hashtag Varsity House Gym, right? Tag the Steven Siller Foundation. You can go to www.varsityhousefitness.com backslash Mission May, sign up for that race, okay? Please register. If you're part of our team, it's really important to us that we give back and do something positive. Okay? This Thursday, I'm doing a live training session with none other than Big Jake Ceresna, the, the mountain of a man himself. Okay, Jake's one of our pro athletes and, uh, and been training his butt off. Luckily enough, has had access to some training gear. So Jake and I are going to do a live breakdown on Thursday, talk about the bench press and some of the things that we've done with Jake over the years to help Jake get to a 400 and I want to say 60 pound, 465 bench or so, you know, raw, natural, right, full bench, you know, no shirts, no nothing, guy's got a monster bench and, uh, and we're going we're gonna to kind of break down a lot of the work that he's done to get to that and also how he's kept his shoulders and elbows and wrists and everything nice and healthy during that time, so we'll kind of go over some of the bench press secrets that we've used to you know, build up that 450 pound bench press for Big Jake. And then, uh, and then today, our good friends, you know, uh, the Panuzos, you know, uh, Brian and Tasha. Tasha. Tasha was a longtime client of ours. Brian and Tasha moved to California, and, and Brian is a lifestyle and nutrition coach, right, and doing some great work out there and put together a great ebook, uh, uh, you know, for, for dads mostly, and it's like how to be a great dad, and it's kind of like reclaiming your life your family and your finances as a, as a dad. So really great stuff there. So I'll be posting that in the group today. So we got a great week of training, a great week of content, and uh, and, and I hope everybody will follow along with us and just keep things moving, okay? So it's Monday, and that's International Chess Day around the world, Bench Press Day, right? But since everybody, all right, since not everybody has access to a bench, okay, we're gonna be doing our dumbbell variations and such. All right, so today's workout's gonna be along the same lines that we've been working on, so that's been a lot of pressing work on Monday, so whether that's shoulder pressing or dumbbell pressing or whatnot, all right, we'll be doing some of that. And then, okay, uh, some accessory work. And we'll finish up with a little challenge, all right, that I have for everybody, we call this the unbroken challenge, and that challenge is gonna be, Paul George is on the line. What's happening, gang? Susan, good to see everybody. Tom Torby, how are you? Okay, so that, that challenge is going to be 100 kettlebell swings or 100 air squats, depending on the equipment you have, unbroken for time, okay? And I'm going to do that today, all right, uh, uh, as we finish. That should take only a couple minutes, right, to do. So it's, it's not easy. We're going to try and do it unbroken, which will be tough. I'm going to try and do that with a 55-pound kettlebell, 100 reps, unbroken, Okay, you gotta get in the zone and go, all right? So if you follow, now if you're, if, you're, if you're less trained and you're a little more novice, okay, you can cut that down to 50, try to do 50 reps unbroken, okay? And do the best you can, all right? So let's follow along with me. We're gonna get things warming up, get this party moving and shaking, all right? I'm gonna grab my jump rope. And uh, we'll get things moving, all right? 
All right, so we've been working on two minutes. Let's set the clock. Oh, my time, my time I didn't want to set today. I said, no, nah, I don't feel like doing jump rope today. We'll set the timer for two minutes. We'll get our jump rope going, all right? If you're following along at home, you're doing your jumping jacks, you're running in place, you're riding the bike, okay? And you're just moving and shaking, all right? We'll get two minutes on the rope and get it popping, all right? Let's go, ready, set, go. Good job, hope everybody had a good weekend. Did a lot of cooking. Prepping my food for the week. Made a bunch of grilled meat yesterday. I gotta post the recipe on the Facebook group, but yesterday I made these like I guess I'd call them Cuban style. Kind of reminded me of like kefta kebabs, you know, like your ground spice ground meat. But I made them with like, you know, Cuban spices like a sofrito, garlic, adobo, right? And then just kebab them. And then they were unbelievable. But then I made, I had some ground pork that my mom had got me from a farm up in Warwick, New York. And I made basically the same thing but with a little bit more herb in it with some rosemary and such. And uh, man, was it amazing. The pork patties that I made, these spiced pork patties, like a, like a pork burger, was out of this universe. And uh, so good, so good. I made like a little corn, avocado, kind of black bean salsa too, that was really good. Uh, that tasted really good. So, good weekend of eating and cooking. That's good. If you can get ahead with your meal prep on the weekends, it makes makes the Monday through Friday so much easier when you have your food ready to go. And I can just go into the fr fridge, dip into a bunch of Tupperwares, you know, make up my meals quick. You know, we've been cooking throughout the week too because we have more time. A couple seconds, gang. Good. We've been cooking throughout the week because we have more time, but like, you know, so we've been doing some theme cooking like Taco Tuesday, burgers on Wednesdays, right? Stuff like that. But, uh, let's get 10 squats, 10 lunges. You know, but I'm still prepping my food on the weekends and the majority of my food, you know, on Saturdays and Sundays. So I have it, you know. One more, two, lunge. Good, eight, two more, nine, ten. Good, let's do a standing circuit. I don't feel like getting on the ground. Then I gotta get back up. Two, three, standing kick. Four, whoo, five, ride a kid stop. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Standing leg cradles. Right, pull them up and in. Make sure you grab your shin, your foot, and pull the leg into you. Right? Right? Big mistake I see people make is just grabbing that ankle and twist it. Right? No good. No good. Four. Five. Six. Two more. Seven. One more. Eight. Good. Flying RDLs. Right? Leg up. Two. Oop, balance. Go so tough. Three. Four. Two more. Five. Good. Six. Switch sides. One. Two. Four. Three. Five. Last one. 
six. Good, okay, let's do our spiders. All right, so we've been doing a little modified version, okay, where I'm holding a little bit, so I'm gonna get that back knee on the ground. I'll get into a good stretch and hold for five, four, three, two, one. I'm gonna drop the elbow to the inside ankle, if you can, you go as far as you can, and hold for one, two, three, four, five, and then I'm gonna do some thoracic rotations. One, two, three, four, five. It's important that you look up at the hand when you do those. If you don't look up, if you rotate and look down, you're not gonna rotate all the way because your head and neck have to rotate too. All right, so elbow in, all right? So good stretch. Hold for five, four, three, two, one. Elbow in, five, four, three, two, one. Rotate, one, two, three, four, five. Good, okay. Let's do some hip hydrants and glute bridges. Kind of standard, right? Always just get those hips and lower back warmed up really good. Anybody over 30, that's like a, an absolute necessity. Anybody over 40, if you don't do it, you're asking, you're asking for injuries. All right, let's go 15. I'm sore everywhere today. This is not how we want to start our Mondays. Lots of landscape. We, we moved our entire gym and reorganized the entire gym this week. And then I did a ton of landscaping, building some rock walls and stuff like that at the house. So I'm starting off, starting off the week sore. Good, one more. Good, let's get our glute bridge. Hips up nice and high, right? Flat line from knees to chest. Push through the heels or flat foot, right? Let's just get that butt up nice and high in the air. You wanna to get to a point where you start to feel your hamstrings and glutes contract. One more. Good, okay. All right, gang, so we got a little specific warm up since we're gonna do a lot of pressing today. All right, that means we gotta warm up our shoulders real good. Okay, so we're gonna do a bunch of shoulder specific. Hey, mama, what's happening? Mama Reds is on the ones and twos. Okay, Howie Greenspan, what's happening, man? Haven't seen you in a million years. Hope you're good, Jay. Big Jay, Max Edge. What's going down, Mr. Witt? Blowing up the parking lot this weekend. I love it, Nick. Danny, nice to see everybody, okay? Good stuff. Okay, so let's get our shoulders loosened up good, gang. So let's start with our half kneeling windmills, okay? So get in a good half kneeling position. All right, remember it's thumbs up. I'm gonna come up, big circle, get to that sticking point, rotate the pinky out, and reach back, reach back, like you're trying to grab something behind you but not being able to rotate your chest. You don't wanna do this, all right? Let's just uh, around one, two, Three, four, five. Reach back, reach back. Look, you're grabbing something good. Now go the other way. Now I want to come down, right? And then I'm going to turn the thumb up when I hit that sticking point. Come back around like a tomahawk chop. Reach back till you get to the point where your bicep and stuff just doesn't go anymore. And then I'm going to rotate up and over. Two, three, four, five. Okay, let's go the other way. Two sides, all right? So go up. Oh, crunch, crunch, crunch the sides tight. One, two, three, four, five. Good. Okay, you can go the other way. One, two, three, four, five. Good. Okay, standing back up. Okay, we're gonna do our shoulder 90-90s, right? So it's one hand behind the back, one hand the other way, right? Like I'm trying to touch the diamond between my spine. And I'm gonna rotate big circles, come up and around, and reach. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, give me two, nine, one more, 10, good job, okay? We're gonna go to the floor, 
and we're going to do our prone swimmers, okay? Similar type of movement, but now moving both arms at the same time. And remember here, gang, the key is not just kind of dragging the hands on the ground, flopping, right, but really reach out behind your back and put your hands, place your hands as high as you can and fold those shoulders down. So we get ten of One, two, three. And you want to get those shoulder blades moving good before you start pressing. Four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. Good. Okay. Now we're going to do a little lat stretch. Another really important thing to do, when you think about like most people's shoulder impingement, shoulder pain in the anterior delt, okay, Mike, G, if you're listening, this is for you, all right? A lot of it comes from your lats and, 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 your, and your pecs being so tight, they're literally pulling everything down. So you want to loosen up those lats, great idea. You know, your foam roll if you have it. All right, if not, we're going to do this stretch. So it's going to be palm blade down, and I'm just going to pull back and away towards the armpit and switch. Okay, loosen up the lats a little bit. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, two more, nine, one more, ten. All right. So we got one more exercise in our specific warm-up. Alright, and that's just going to be a high rep band pull apart, okay, a high rep band pull apart. So normally we do like 10 reps or whatever, but I'm going to do two sets of 25, alright, and burn them out. Now what I like to do sometimes is do these times, like I'll do two minutes of band pull apart. So I'll do um, two one minute sets, right, with a light band, alright, that's easy to use, alright, so again, just breaking the status quo of always having to do eight. 10, 12, 15 reps, all right? Don't put a rep number in your head, just put a, put a time number in your head. Maybe it's a minute, maybe it's 30 seconds, and do as many reps as you can in there. So again, when you think about like changing up variation to increase, you know, your stress levels or whatever, like to, to stimulate a good response, if I only have an orange band, what can I do to, that's different? Well, instead of doing 10 and 15 rep sets, do 15 and 30 second sets. Right? So you can time set, you can speed them up, you can slow them down, there's lots of ways. All right, let's get, I'm just gonna go two sets, I'm just picking an arbitrary number. I'm just gonna go two sets of 25, okay? Nine, 10, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, five more, one, two, three, four, Five. Now, if you wanted to make this a little hard too, you could stop at the back end. You could do a lot of different things like we talked about. Hold on. Let me get a sip out of my amazing blender bottle, VH blender bottle. Look at that thing. Mm. Oh, yeah. Who wants one of these? Look at that bad boy. Sweet. Right? Nice blender bottle. Thank you, blender bottle, for sending them to us. We appreciate it. All right, let's go. Gratuitous plug there for Blender Bob. Let's get another round. One, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Five more. One, two, three, four, and five. All right, all right, all right. Good job. Okay, warm-up's over, gang. Everybody get a quick sip, get your towels, get ready to go. You need one dumbbell or a kettlebell. In the heavier range, something that if you only have light weights, again, like we've been talking about every week, if you only have a 10 or 15 pound dumbbell at home, well, then it's reps, right? Then you're just gonna give me 15, 20, 25 reps, right? But if you do have heavier weights, I want a weight that I can do for, that's gonna be tough at around eight to 10 reps, okay? So, you know, whether that's a 35 or a 55 or you know, if you're a freakazoid at home and you, you know, you want to rip out the 150s like Big Jake for 20, okay, then, then grab your big weights. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll with a kettlebell today just to change the stimulus a little bit. 
and we're gonna just change it up, okay? So we're gonna do straight sets here, and we're just gonna do four rounds with very little break because I'm only doing a single arm press. So again, when you look at training, people get so caught up on the cardio, but we're gonna do four sets of single arm presses. And if you go hard enough on those, that's like doing eight sets, right? So that's like one, two, three, four, right? So that's like doing eight total sets. But if I don't really take any breaks other than the one side that's resting, okay, maybe I just take 10 seconds to catch my breath, all right, I'm gonna get a really good cardiorespiratory response from that, right? So, you know, spending hours on the elliptical, I'll spend hours lifting weights. All right, forget that. All right, so let's, let's do, let's get our, it's gonna be, we're gonna start off with a floor press, all right? So I'm gonna use a kettlebell. If you have a dumbbell at home, you can use your dumbbell, okay? And remember the floor press, I wanna get to here. You can keep a knee bent if you want, or both legs bent, and then it's just a press. Now the key, key thing to remember here is bringing it down with control, resting the arm all the way on the ground, and then firing out. You don't wanna bang it, okay? And you don't wanna try and stop it before it hits the ground. You wanna, almost in a sense, Think of the floor press as like a box squat for your bench press, where I'm going to load the arms onto the ground, and then I'm going to fire them out. I'm going to load the arms onto the ground, and then I'm going to fire it out. Just like a box squat, where I'm going to load my butt onto the bench, and then I'm going to fire out and stand up. Okay, so let's do, let's do our first round. We're going to do four rounds with very minimal break here. Okay, and I'll, go, I'll try a couple different angles so you can see me going from the front, from the side, and from the back, and you, so you can see what this looks like. All right, if you're following along. If you have questions, type them into the chat. All right, let's go. Ready? Boop. Okay. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, four, ten. Give me two. Come on. Back. One more. Dead. Good. I talked about this yesterday, uh, or last week, rather. You know, I had a lot of people write me like, what should I buy? Should I get dumbbells, bench press, rack, power rack? I said, I should buy a set of kettlebells. If you have a set of kettlebells at home, you have a set of kettlebells, a jump rope, and a sandbag, or a med bowl, you got a whole gym. You don't need much more than that. Alright? Good. Let's go again from the side. Okay? I'm going to show you side end. Okay, get that leg bent again. Press one. Bring it down with control. Two. And if you're using a kettlebell at home and you haven't done traditional movements with them, like bench pressing and rowing, you'll feel a big difference. It's not the same. This, this weight is pulling very hard to the outside, the way it lays on your hand. <clears throat> one more. Good. Bring it up. Switch. Switch legs. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Two more. Four. Five. Ten. Good. Good. Okay. I'm going to show you from the back this time, but I want you to see the angle of my arm, all right, when I come down. I think a lot of people play on these out too wide. They either go too wide or too narrow. All right, so let's go round three. All right, so see how my arm is about a 45 degree angle? So if you looked at me like this, if I was bench pressing with two arms, both arms are kind of pointing out at a 45. And when I come in, I pull it into place. Pull it into place. Turn the wrist in a little bit. Three. Pull with my back. Four. Pull with my back. Five. Pull with my back. Six. Seven. Eight. Two more. Go. Nine. Let's go. Four. Ten. Oh, good. 
switch it up. Good. Leave the right spot. Pull it into place. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Good. Good. So, we got one more round. So what you can see is, you see my arm loading onto the ground? I'm actually relaxing some of the musculature. I'm loading that muscle up and the muscle's going soft a little bit and then boom, and I fire it out, okay? So, you know, kind of breaking that eccentric and concentric motions, all right? Let's get one more, you know, one more. I'm sweating, see? Heart's pumping and we're just lifting weights. You don't have to be doing tons of cardio. Just keep it fast paced. Let's go, ready, up, set. <laughs> Two more. Nine. One more. Ten. All right. Oh. Woo! That's what I'm saying. Swall up. That's good. Paul George, you got your pump on or what? Let's go. Nice job. Nice job. All right, everybody. Get a quick sip. Hey, right, get a quick sip. All right, we're gonna move on to our next. Move on to the next round. All right. All right, so we're gonna have two exercises in this series. Let me get rid of my band here. Put my watch back on. Hat, watch. All right, so I'm using a bench, and I'm gonna do an incline row. And I'm going to continue to use my kettlebells just for a variation in stimulus because the grip and stuff is going to be a little bit different. But if you don't have that at home, you're either doing your dumbbell rows. If you don't have a bench that inclines, you could do them on a flat bench and just do a chest supported row. If you don't have a bench at all, you could just do standing rows, self supported rows, or one knee up on a chair or whatever. All right. I, I, what I like to do is kind of break things down into a single arm or double arm. So the goal here is to do a double arm exercise. Right, so I'm taking both shoulder blades and scapula and lats and pulling them together in the back. That's good. It's a little different stimulus than doing single arm. So if you're working at home, maybe it's just a double arm dumbbell row, double arm band row, okay? I'm gonna use my kettlebells. Now, on top of that, we're gonna do one of my favorite like OG exercises, and that's a dumbbell pullover. And this is like, you know, an homage to the old days of bodybuilding, and uh, and I talked about it before. Like this was one of Arnold's like favorite exercises, and for me personally, I've done the pullover for years. I love it, and I feel like it really gives me a great response in my lats, but even more so in my triceps. It really smokes out your triceps. So we're gonna do those two exercises, and we're gonna do three sets. Okay. And we're gonna so chest supported kettlebell row, come here, get a grip, and then pull. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, one more. Good. Okay, I'm gonna flatten out my bench. I'm gonna grab a hold of my dumbbell now. If you're, going, if you're following along at home and you haven't been doing these very much, go light. 
15, 20, 25 pound dumbbells. I've been doing these literally my whole life. So my technique and ability to manage the load is a little bit better. I'm gonna start with a 55, probably just, I only have 65, so I'll go to 65. That's very light for me, all right? So again, this is one exercise where you wanna be careful with your shoulders. So I'll do the first set facing this way so you can see kind of my body position, and I'll do the next set facing from the side so you can see what that looks like. So I'm gonna grab my dumbbell, I'm gonna slide down on my bench or chair. You can do this on the side of your couch, or you can just do it on the floor. If you don't have a bench at all, you can just do it on the floor. All right, I'm gonna cup it with my hands, up overhead, arms come back. I drop my hips into the movement. So as I come back, I'm gonna sink my hips a little bit, stretch my lats more. How do you know you're in the right position on the bench? When I tilt my head back, I can just touch the back of my head on the edge of the bench. Two, back, hold on. Good. I'll switch the angle for the next half so you guys can see that. I always felt like these also were a great warm up. Anybody who like really into training, you know, if you know who Dorian Yates was, Dorian Yates is, you know, like a seven time Mr. Olympia, one of the greatest bodybuilders ever. And he used to start all his like upper body days with pullovers, right? Because he did, he did them on a machine, uh, 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 like a, a universal machine, but he felt like it really helped open up his shoulders and lats before he started benching and stuff. So now he was on something 20 something years ago. Okay? And so was Arnold 40 something years ago. Okay, let's go. All right, we're going to do another round. Let's go. Squeeze those backs. The reason why I love using the kettlebells too. See how I'm rotating the handles a little bit more? You know, the dumbbells don't get in the way. Just another great tool. Kettlebells are my favorite at home training tool. You know, I'll bring a kettlebell out. Like, I have most of my stuff in my basement, but I'll bring a kettlebell up onto the deck. I'll bring one for Antonio. I got a little five pounder for him. And like, I'm doing yard work, but in between 10 swings, 10 presses, 10 high pulls, whatever, right? It's just a great tool. All right. All right, cup it. See how I'm on the, see where I'm on the bench? Just where my head can just about rest on the bench. I'm kind of looking back. Hips are up high to start. Hands over chest. And as I come back, right, I'm going to drop the, 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 the hips. Stretch. Come back. Pull with your lats. Good, okay. One of my favorites. I love the pullovers. I really don't get much, uh, nothing really pumps up my lats like a pullover. Uh, even or another great variation is if you have a cable machine with a rope, right? Doing a rope pullover is a really great variation too. All right, we got one more round. Let's 
set of pullovers. I'm going to grab my heavier dumbbell for this last set. Right. I got to get that. I got to get that good pump on Monday. I got to get that good Monday pump. Start the week off right. Let's go. Those are tough. That's it. Good. Nice job. Woo! Lats are pumped. That feels good. That's a great, again, it's one of my absolute favorite variations. You can't go wrong with a good pullover. Whew. Great for the lats, great for the triceps. Okay. And again, just another fun variation to mix things up, right? If you haven't done something like that for a while. It's always good to throw in some new, some new spice, right? That's the most fun part about training, right? It's kind of trying new stuff, you know, and kind of experimenting. Me personally, you know, fitness is much more than just fitness for me. It's kind of a lifelong passion and process. And I've used my body as like, you know, an, an experimental lab rat for 25 years, trying every program under the sun, every training method under the sun, so that, you know, I can train you better, and, uh, and just, you know, because I love it and I want to keep myself, you know, fresh and, you know, the latest techniques, methods, things like that, all right, some really great stuff out there. Okay, gang. Let's grab a stopwatch if you have one. If not, it's okay. I'm going to time for us so I can, I can uh, you know, I'll keep track for everybody. I'm going to grab a set of dumbbells to do push-ups off of because my wrists are a little sore still from all the, all the pressing and um, from all the yard work. And here's what we got. We have five minutes of push-ups, okay? Now, I'm just going to do 10 push-ups every 30 seconds for 5 minutes. That's 10 rounds, all right? I'm not going to make it. That's kind of the whole idea, okay? I might make it, all right? So that's, you know, that's 10 rounds of 10 push-ups. Give me 100 total push-ups. Now, if you're at home following and you want to do 5, right? You do 5 push-ups every 30 seconds with me right, eight, whatever. You gotta modify the number to suit you and what, what you're good at. You figure if it takes me 15 seconds to do 10 push-ups, I wanna be able to have that little bit of rest period in between. Now, if we have to modify the push-ups at home and you have to go from your knees, that's totally okay. You have to modify the reps and drop the reps, that's totally okay. But the key is to start each set at the top of the next 30 second count, all right, and not to falter from that. Right, that's the number one key here. So if, I don't care if you're doing one push-up every 30 seconds and it's a perfect push-up, but the key is every 30 second interval, I'm gonna start that next set no matter what, okay? All right, so it's five minutes of work. Every 30 seconds the clock is gonna chime. 
and we're going to start another round of push-ups. All right. So when I say ready, set, go, we're going to hit our first set of ten, all right, and then we'll be resting until the next thirty-second mark comes up. All right. Let me back up a little bit so you can see me better. Everybody, get me. You feeling me on a Monday or what? All right. Let's go. Thirty seconds on the clock. Dumbbell set. Turn my hat around. I'm ready. Ready? Set. Go. Four, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That left me with 20 seconds to break. That took 10 seconds. Okay. Right. See if we can keep that pace. It's a hundred rep, hundred rep though, it's gonna get hard. Five, three, two, one, go! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> Second set was way harder. <laughs> Ten seconds. You're best sitting up like this. If you lean forward, you're still working those muscles. All right. Five, three, two, one, go. Good. Try to cut the chest, that chin to the ground. Lock those elbows out. No short reps. Short reps. Good. Come on. Ready? Go! <laughs> Ten. Good. Five. Four. Five, four, five, four. Good. Let's go. We're going on five. Going on five. Yeah, okay. Five seconds. Okay. Going on round six. Three. Turn. Hup. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Mm. Get tough. Get tough. Going on seven. Going on seven. Five seconds. Easy money. Ready? Go. Oh. Come on now. Easy. I do this all day. <laughs> good, good, good. That's it. Five seconds. Go. Five, six, seven, eight. Oh God, it's stolen out. Spoke too soon. Nine. Ten.
Five seconds. That way, quick. Let's go, last round. Go. One, three, five, One more. Oh. It is a good, fast way to get a hundred to make a hundred push-ups. Pretty darn miserable. Not that it wasn't miserable to begin with, right? Good job, everybody. Drink break. Water break. All right. I'm going to grab a barbell because I forgot to bring one out. Hold on one second. Don't go anywhere. I bring out a barbell. But again, you know, I realized that not most people at home don't have a 80 pound massive fat bar, okay? But that's okay. You don't have to have a bar at all. I'm just going to show you a variation of a shoulder press that if you do have a bar at home that you can use, a landmine press. If you don't, you can just do a half kneeling shoulder press like we've done a bunch of times before, okay? So, we're going to finish this out. All right, so it's going to be two rounds here. All right, so I'm going to do a kneeling shoulder press, a landmine press. All right, and do a half kneeling press. Then I'm going to do some kneeling marine shoulders. And why doing them from their knees? Well, because it's harder. Doing from your knees makes you activate a lot more core. Missing some gear. I should have brought more gear out. Okay. And then we're going to do a tricep skull crusher on the ground, just laying on the ground. All right. So if I'm if I'm at home, you could set the bar up on the ground, butt it up against a dumbbell, or in a plate or against the wall is a great way to set up for a landmine press. Um, if you don't have a landmine, like I said, at home, you're just doing a, a, a half-kneeling shoulder press, right? So, but I'm going to do my landmine variation, so I'm here, and it's just... This bar is heavy. It's 75 pounds. Uh, yeah, so it's heavy, heavy enough. It's not really heavy enough for me, but it's heavy enough. Tight four, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Good. I'll just do a couple more reps. All right, my marine shoulders. All right, so kneeling position. And I'm going to come out, forward, down, up, out, down. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, last one, ten. Good, okay? And then there, remember the one thing we've talked about there from Q is don't round, don't round the corners, right? Up, out, make them 90 degree angles, all right? And then I'm gonna do my skulls. I'm gonna rest on my pad here, give me a little elevation for the skull. Looks like I lean back a little bit. Four. By putting the pad under my thoracic spine, it automatically puts me into like a backward tilt. So it's almost like as if I was doing the skulls off the bench, kind of hanging back a little bit. One more, 15. Good. That's it. That's one round. I'm only doing two. So push yourself. All right. Go as heavy or as 
deep into the burn as you can. All right. So like if you know if you again if you got light weights, you got to give me 25 reps. Give me 25 reps. Right? Get some type of pump out of it. All right. Let's get the last round. Okay. Last one. I'll go. I'm gonna go 15 on the press. I'll try and get 12 to 15 on the marine. Three. Kneeling Marines. I'm only using eight for these, gang. So, you know, I had people sending me pictures last week of them doing their Marine shoulders with like 15 pound dumbbells. And, you know, I'm not saying that I'm the strongest dude in the world, but I've been training my whole life. And if I'm using eights or tens and you're using 15s, I got a question technique. You're like, like this, right? That's not, that's not good. All right, so super strict with these. Four, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'm gonna get fifteen. Come on. Twelve. Let's go. Fifteen. Ah. Fourteen. Come on, push. Oh yeah. That's burning. That's hot and heavy, baby. Hot and heavy. All right, let's go. Last set of scullies. Burn these out. Make a count, man. Let's go. Make a count. Nice and straight. gang need a quick sip we got we're running OT today man we're putting we're putting in the work today all right we're putting in the work today cheese are you working or are you just watching all right all right last thing five minutes of work left don't skip out on the good stuff You're either doing 50 or 100 kettlebell swings or squats unbroken. Okay, 50 or 100 kettlebell swings or air squats, body weight, okay, unbroken. Now I'm going to do the swings. I'm going to do 100 swings with a 55 pound kettlebell unbroken for time. If you're at home, keep track of your time. Try and give me 100 squats. 50 squats, 50 kettlebells. Just take note of the weight and the time so that if we do this again, you have a reference point and you can try and beat yourself, all right? You're not trying to beat me. I want, to, I want to see you kick my ass, Greg. Come on, Chief. All right, so here's what we got. I'm going to start the clock. 100 swings. Straight through, hopefully, all right? Or if I have to put it down, that's okay, but the clock keeps running. All right, and I'm gonna go, but I'm gonna try and do my best to get to 100 unbroken, or at least as far as I can. I haven't done this in a very long time, so I'm not quite sure how my lower back's gonna be screaming after about 50, 60 reps, okay? So, let's get set up. And if you wanna do the swings at home, if you have a dumbbell, remember, you just hold it like, a, like an ax handle, and you can swing it like that, okay? A little different, but same. Okay, 100 reps, unbroken. 
In three, two, one, go. form over function, right? You gotta have, you gotta have good technique. I don't wanna hurt my lower back. I got 30 more to go. And that was tough. I'm breathing heavy. Like forearm smoking. All right, let's go. 30 to go. No stopping here. Ready? Set. That's 10. One, two, three, four, shot, come on, get me going. Four, five, six, five, eight, nine, ten more, come on. Up, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten. Oh, that was terrible. Oh. Three minutes, 15 seconds to get 100 kettlebell swings at 55 pounds. To a strong first RKC kettlebell expert, that's laughable. <laughs> to a washed up old me head, pretty good. All right, not bad. You can see I'm breathing heavy, man. And that was tough. And I've been running, training a lot more the last couple months since the lockdown. And you can get a hell of a workout in less than five minutes like that. All right, great job, everybody. All right, don't forget, last reminder. Great events today. If you're in the VH members only group, check it out from the post from my man, Brian Panuzzo. Great post on mindset, stress, and I'm gonna put a link to his awesome ebook that he put together. It's really fantastic. I highly recommend it for all the dads out there to check it out. Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern time, me and the big dog, Jake Ceresna, are gonna do a live training session together on our Instagram. I'll post that up on Facebook, but that's gonna be on the Varsity House Instagram. Okay? And then this weekend, the run for response. Proceeds go, all proceeds, 1,000% go to the Stephen Siller Tunnels, the Fountain Towers, Towers Foundation. And we're donating money to our frontline heroes, first responders, EMS workers, 
virtual 5K this Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Memorial Day. We can get out, run, walk, jog, lace them up, help us out. See you next time, gang. Great job.